Now it's my great honor to welcome a beloved member of our Coca-Cola family. He is, in my opinion and the opinion of everyone, without question, one of the greatest business leaders, investors, philanthropists of all time. Please join me in giving a refreshing Coca-Cola welcome to Warren Buffett. Maybe not everyone in our audience actually knows your story when you first started. Picture Omaha in 1937. I was seven years old and uh, uh, no air conditioning, so the summers were hot and humid. People uh, went out on their lawns at night just to try and cool off, and I got the idea that maybe I could sell them what you would call soft drinks and we called pop. Uh, so I, uh, I went around to a bunch of gas stations and in those days, every gas station had a cooler with varied soft drinks in it, and it had a little opener on the side and something to catch all the bottle caps. So I went around and collected all the bottle caps for weeks uh, at these various gas stations. I collected 8,000 of them. And then I sorted them all out, and I saw that they were Coca-Cola overwhelmed everybody else. Uh, so I decided to hook myself up to them. There, and <laughs> there were these little silver-like ones in those days. And my grandfather had a grocery store, so I went to my grandfather and I said, uh, how about giving me a deal on Coke so I can sell it around the neighborhood? And then he sold me at the rate of six bottles for a quarter, and I went around and sold them for a nickel each. And I sold out every time. And uh, I had no inventory, I had no receivables, I had the best business I ever had. <laughs> <laughs> but I made one mistake. I didn't put the money I saved into Coca-Cola stock. <laughs> and, but I, I rectified that mistake some years later. <laughs> what excites you these days in technology, innovation, new businesses? I like this one. <laughs> I, 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 I'm the kind of guy that likes to bet on sure things, <laughs> Mutar. And, uh, uh, you know, since 1886 and, and uh, Jacob's Pharmacy, you know, you've just seen year after year after year till now you've got 1.8 billion, you know, eight ounce servings a day around the world. And when I joined the board in 1988, I don't remember the exact figure, it was a whole lot less. And you've got fewer shares outstanding now and you've got way more <laughs> per capita. And, and you're gaining share around the world. So uh, those are the kind of businesses I like. I like, I like wonderful brands. You got to take care of them. And, uh, but if you take care of a, of a great brand, you know, it's forever. And, and uh, that, those are the businesses I like. We own 400 million shares of Coca-Cola stock, as you know. We've never sold a share. And I wouldn't think of selling a share. I, I, I think, well, in my lifetime, since 1930, real GDP per capita in the United States has gone up six for one. Think, think of that, six for one in one person's lifetime. We have not lost the secret sauce, so that's the kind of future I see ahead too. And and uh, and if that's the future, you want to own you want to own businesses that are going to participate in that future. And and uh, we've done that for decades now at Berkshire Hathaway, and we'll continue to do it. Could you say a, f a few words about the United States, our how we're prepared for for meeting the challenges ahead in terms of um, economic trade policies? Trade well, deficit, tax, um, reform. Yeah, we always have problems. But Mutar, the luckiest person on a probability basis, in my view, that's ever been born in the history of the world is the baby being born in the United States today. I mean, it, it, this country, j just think about it. In 1790, you know, we had four million people here, and there were hundreds of millions of people in the world. And we weren't smarter and we didn't even work harder than people else were necessarily, but we had a system that unleashed human potential. And that system, quality of opportunity, a rule of law, a market system, uh, has produced an abundance you can't believe. I mean, just, just look about you. Think about what this looked like 200 years ago. There wasn't anything here, basically. And, and it improved the standard of living in my lifetime, six for one. So, we, we've got the formula, and, and it hasn't been exhausted remotely. I mean, just look at what's happened in the last 15 or 20 years. We keep turning out people like Steve Jobs or you know, whomever it may be, and uh, that, that'll continue. So we'll always have problems. I mean, you know, ever since I got out of school, somebody's 
I used to sell stocks that always give me 10 reasons why you shouldn't buy them, and you've heard them all throughout your life. But the world does not belong to the pessimists, believe me. <laughs> You're selling happiness, and, 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 uh, and it's, you know, and having it an arm's length away is, is a big part of it. <laughs> and you, you know, the distribution system that developed, it's, it's, it's the right formula, Mutar, and it just has to be carried out with, you know, with extreme diligence, enthusiasm, and every minute of the day. <laughs> What are the things that you believe actually businesses need to do to continue to crack that calculus for growth? Well, what kills great businesses, if you look at, I do, I do believe in looking at history, and I, I, and I try to, I, I like to study failure, actually. And my, my partner says, all I want to know is where I'll die, so I'll never go there. And, and we want to see what has caused businesses to go bad. And the biggest thing that kills them is complacency. I mean, you, you want a, a restlessness, a feeling that, you know, that, that somebody's always after you, but you're going to stay ahead of them. You, you always want to be on the move. And, and uh, uh, when you've got a great business, you know, like Coca-Cola, which is, there aren't any like Coca-Cola, but, but uh, you really, the, the danger would always be that you rest on your laurels. But I see none of that, obviously, at Coca-Cola. But that's, that, that is the key, to, to compete the same way when you've, got 1.8 billion servings being sold daily, as when you were selling, you know, 10 a day. And, and that restlessness, that belief that, that tomorrow is more exciting than today, you know, you just have to have it permeate the organization.